If you're thinking about relocating to Salem, Oregon or any of the surrounding areas, you are going to want to listen to this video until the very end. But first, if you're new here, welcome. My name's Mariah. I'm a real estate agent in the beautiful state of Oregon, and I work with a lot of out-of-state clients every year, people who are relocating to Salem or anywhere in the surrounding areas. If that's you, by the way, don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to work with you as well. I'll put my contact information below, shoot me an email, and I'd love to get a Zoom call with you on this schedule. But because I work with so many clients that are moving to our area, um, and most of them, actually move here and and they close on their home without seeing it first so we go through the entire home buying process from start to finish without them being here it got me thinking and I was thinking what are the things that if I was going to be moving to another area relocating to an area that I've never been to before what are the things that would be most important for me to know or ask about before moving there. So I thought through that and I'm gonna give you guys some answers today that if you're in that situation, you're probably gonna be thinking as well. I am sitting in my car sweating right now, by the way. Um, so that's the first thing is, we'll talk about the weather later, but um, I always get asked about what's the weather like in Salem? Well, it's beginning of May at the time of filming this at least and it's been rainy, rainy, rainy up until today actually and right now it's going to be in the 80s today um, and then the next few days so we do get a lot of rain but it's finally to the point where we're, we're starting to see some of those really nice days but let's get into these tips that you're going to want to know the first question that if you are considering relocating to this area you're probably wondering is where is everything located nobody wants to buy a house expecting to be centrally located and then they find out that they're actually a 20 minute drive to everything. Nobody wants to be in that situation. I think it's really important to have those clear expectations up front before you start house hunting here in Oregon, even if you're house hunting virtually, which we can totally do for you, is just knowing um, a general idea of where are things located. The way that you can find this out is one, we do have a whole playlist on our channel sharing everything you need to know about Salem, the surrounding areas. I won't get too into this in this video because I don't want to be redundant. I'll just point you to those videos where you can where you can hear about like Salem explained every different side of town as well as a lot of great um, towns on the outskirts of Salem. And another thing that you're going to want to do is hop on a Zoom call with me. I can get all your questions answered about the area um, and really help explain to you what to expect from each different side of town in each different area. The next thing that if I were you, I would want to know is, is it safe there? How safe is it? Where are the safe sides of town and the non-safe sides of town? So as a relocation real estate agent, I legally can't say um, this is a good side of town or this is a safe side of town. This is a bad side of town. I can't necessarily use those words. There's a lot of gray areas and Because of that what I will do is I will point you to the facts I can say this side of town is high school ratings or this side of town has really high crime ratings I can say those things I can I can tell you the facts So one resource I will give you right now is crimespot.net. That is a resource where you can look up the specific crime and school ratings um, or maybe not school rate school ratings um, is a different one it's schooldigger.com so write those down uh, but school digger you will be able to find out the school ratings for every specific neighborhood as well as each side of town and then crimespot.net you'll be able to find out what's the crime rating in you know you can type in your certain the certain address of the home you're looking at and find out like what's the crime rating like here in this specific area inside of town I can say just off the top of my head um, West and South Salem have the highest school ratings and lowest crime ratings out of all of Salem. Many of our relocation clients choose those two areas because they either have kids and are looking for high school ratings or um, they just want to be in an area with the lowest crime rating out of all of Salem. But um, I can say with confidence, I, I do believe that there are great neighborhoods on every side of town in Salem, no matter what side of town it is you're looking on. I have personally lived myself in an area of Salem that has quote the lowest school rating and higher crime rating than other sides of town and I did always feel safe there was never an issue um, but that's all I have to say on that the next thing I would want to know if I was moving to a new place is what community events happen and where do they take place where is where is the stuff that's going on in town okay so there is a park um, in Salem called Riverfront Park. It has a, it's right downtown Salem. It has, um, I don't know how many miles, but it has a ton of walking trails, biking trails, um, right on the river. It's got a steamboat. I'm pretty sure you can do like a lunch 
t- dinner th- boat tour thing, whatever on it. Um, I'm not quite sure. I haven't done it in a very long time. Um, there's a carousel there. There's a children's playground, um, walking bridges, but they also have, um, they do have an amphitheater, but they also have events there all summer long. So that is like a very pop in place. Um, I go there very frequently with my family in the summer and it seems like every weekend, I don't think it's actually every weekend, but it feels like it. There is always an event. Um, we drive by it on, you know, a Thursday or a Friday and there's tents getting set up. They're ready to throw whatever event it is. So all summer long, there are events that go on there, whether it's like the world beat festival or a little like carnival type situation or a community event of some kind, or, um, whether it is just, or concerts. They do have concerts there. They also have, um, movies in the park all summer long. There's, you can find those dates online, but that is one area where there are community events happening and it is popping. Another place is the Kaiser Rapids Park. This is a park in Kaiser. They also have a really great playground. They have a huge dog park. They have walking trails. So go check it out if you're in the area and you have kids, but they also do have events here, um, frequently. Um, Bush Pasture Park is a place where it's, again, great walking trails, great playgrounds, really just beautiful place to go for a walk in general or to just ride your bike, whatever, um, or have a picnic. And they do have events there. Um, not as many as Riverfront, but they do have events there throughout the year. Mainly in the summer is when you're going to see these because it's Oregon. We don't really have a lot of outdoor events in the winter. The next uh, place that I'll touch on is the fairgrounds. So the Oregon State Fairgrounds are located right here in Salem, Oregon, and our um, their like expo center, whatever, um, is where a lot of events are held year round. So you're gonna see. Um, I went to the Etsy fair there not too long ago. That was really cool. Just a ton of like really awesome handmade things that you could buy. They have. Um, my friend just went to a junk sale no antique thing where it's like I think it was called like the junk sale but it's like antiques it's not actual junk but I don't know they, they have um, events there all year round they have events going on um, that you can go see community events things you can go go take a look at get involved in fun things to do place whatever at the Oregon State Fairgrounds the last thing as far as like getting involved community things to do places to go in the area there are a lot of really great churches in the area um, that have events throughout the year for families for kids if that's something that you're interested in as well and also downtown Salem has events quite frequently um, if you look on I think like Facebook is a good place to look sometimes on Facebook you'll see events um, but downtown Salem has um, there's certain restaurants that have live music on a consistent basis or they'll have like a poetry night or a game night at one of the restaurants um, there's also a handful of bars that are in Salem and they're not necessarily downtown Salem. Some of them are, but some of them aren't downtown Salem, but they also have, um, events. They have live music. They have artists that come and travel and will stop at, um, at that bar and have like a show there. So there are definitely, um, events going on in Salem, but you kind of have to look for them if that makes sense. Um, and then of course, Portland is only an hour drive from Salem and there are many, many more events going on there than in Salem. Um, all the time so yes you gotta do your re- there are lots of events you kind of have to do your research and and to be involved but there are a lot of events here in Salem and a lot of great things you can be involved in in the community the next thing I would want to know is what is the weather like and when is the best time to visit okay well guys it is the beginning of May at the time of filming this and I am in my car um, and it, it's quite hot outside right now um, if you were to go outside it's I believe in the 80s today And uh, up until now though, like all of April, it's been pretty rainy. And it's been now, like I look at the calendar, the upcoming weather, it is all sunshine within the next 10 days. But after that, we could totally get rain again. Who knows? I always say it's really never, we're really never safe as far as like out of the rain season until after June, I say. Um, Fourth of July is usually pretty hot, Um, usually. We've had rainy ones, obviously, but um, usually it's pretty rainy off and on, but we'll also have nice days in the spring um, here and there like today Um, and then our real summer in my brain like if you were going to plan a wedding here in Oregon and it's going to be outside and you want to make sure there's going to be no rain I would say July August or September are your dates Um, July it gets warm um, August and September um, and this is for the Salem area obviously different parts of Salem are going to have different weather 
July, August, September, um, even October, the last few years, I have been like sweating while I'm at the pumpkin patch ready for the rain to come because I want to wear my fall clothes. So, um, it, it, but then after, you know, October, once November comes, it's pretty much back to being cold, colder, um, and rain. We don't get a ton of snow in Salem. At least we'll have a couple days of the year usually where it's like frosty. Everything shuts down. Everyone freaks out. It's this like huge deal because we don't really get snow here. Um, we've had, you know, snowstorms throughout my life living here. Um, but usually we don't get a ton of snow. If we get anything, it's more like frost or a few days of ice and then it goes away. As for the best time of year to visit, I think fall in Oregon is so beautiful. Fall in Salem. I'm just going to end it there. Fall in Salem is so beautiful. There's so many neighborhoods. Go drive through Candelaria. Go drive through Laurel Springs. Go drive through the Bush Park neighborhood. All those neighborhoods during fall, they just light up and are so beautiful with all the trees and the leaves and the colors. It is unmatched. Um, so I really love fall here. I'm a little biased though. I think that it really just depends on what works for you if you're wanting to visit before you, um, before you buy something here. The last thing I would be asking if I were you is, is there anything to do in the area with kids? Yes, there is. Um, we have just off the top of my head, there's a theme park called Enchanted Forest um, just outside of Salem and Turner. I still consider it Salem. It's like right there. Um, so that's pretty fun. Um, we have Gilbert, the Gilbert House Children's Museum. It is open year round. I think it's a lot more fun in the summer um, or the fall if it's not raining. So you can go outside as well there, but they do have you know a lot of things to do indoors. Um, we have the Oregon Zoo is only about an hour away. I'm going there tomorrow. That's in Portland. We have um, oh, quite a few things if you're willing to drive to Portland. There's a lot more. It opens up a lot more options. But right here in Salem, there's a trampoline park called Get Air. There's a handful of like indoor playgrounds like to for toddlers and kids, just kids in general, um, that are nice because in the winter when you're stuck inside, when you live here, you can't really, I mean, you don't have to be stuck inside, but it's a lot harder to go out um, just because you don't want to be rained on. Um, and so they have, um, we do have a handful just right here in Salem of indoor playgrounds that also have like coffee shops. So you can sit and drink your coffee, get some work done and they enjoy that. You know, your kids can enjoy the indoor playground as well. So we do have some things like that. Um, I feel like we have a decent amount of things to do for kids for the size of the town. I'm the kind of person that I wish there was more to do because I like going places. I like having fun. I like things to do and don't really like to be home a lot. But um, for the size of the town, you kind of have to have that expectation. You know, this is not a town with a population of 500,000 people or a million people. This is a town of, I think we're at like 175,000 people right now at the time of filming this. So you got to have realistic expectations for what you're getting yourself into, but there are definitely things to do. Um, my family and I, you know, never really lack in finding things to do as a family. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you watch this video all the way through, hit the thumbs up button, head over to my channel. I have a handful of playlists that you might grab value from if you are considering moving to the area. Um, and I will see you guys next time.